nobody has the right to kill. Nobody has the right to kill. Hello, I'm Rabbi David Novak. I am a, a professor of Jewish studies at the University of Toronto, uh, and I am uh, honored to, to be the vice president of the Jewish Pro-Life uh, Foundation. Uh, today I'm speaking uh, about uh, the misinformation that has been given uh, to the public uh, by especially the National Council of Jewish Women, um, arguing that in the Jewish tradition, uh, abortion is a right. Um, and this is incredibly misleading uh, and misleading many people uh, who have no idea what the Jewish tradition teaches on uh, this issue. Let me begin by saying that according to the Torah, which is the Hebrew Bible, which we believe is divinely revealed, uh, and the whole tradition of interpretation uh, uh, that has been developed and is still developing within uh, the Jewish community, historically. Uh, in that whole tradition based upon divine revelation, uh, the only uh, right that you have to kill is in self-defense. And if somebody's coming at you with a, with a gun, uh, or somebody at somebody or at somebody else with a gun, uh, you are supposed to save their life, even if it means killing the assailant. But anything other than that is simply not allowed. Now, that is a indisputable factor. Uh, and the Jewish tradition talks about rights. Children have the right to uh, the love and support of their parents. Parents have the right to uh, be honored uh, and respected by their children. Uh, and there are numerous rights that have uh, a corresponding duty. In other words, if I have a right to something, then you have a duty to uh, minimally not interfere with my right and maximally to uh, aid me uh, in uh, exercising my right. Now, all human life uh, from conception uh, to death uh, has a right to live, which means that all the rest of us have a duty minimally not to end that life, to interfere with that life, maximally to aid that life to uh, live uh, as fully as and happily as possible. Uh, that is what the Jewish tradition teaches. Uh, and questions of whether an unborn child or a fetus is is, is a person or not uh, is really not relevant uh, because even if one doesn't regard uh, a fetus as an acting person, it's still uh, in any way part of its uh, mother's body, uh, nonetheless, uh, in the Jewish tradition, uh, an unborn child is called Adam, is called a human being. And human beings are created in the image of God. Uh, and therefore, an assault on another human being is an assault on God, which is obviously not possible, but one does the, the next nearest thing, which is an assault on the image of God, which is a human being. Now, there are those who cite... Uh, numerous cases uh, where uh, rabbis in the past, some rabbis in the past, permitted abortions under under certain uh, conditions. Uh, 
Uh, and I think that many of these cases were very isolated instances. Uh, and also, at, it, at the time that these cases were decided, uh, abortion was not a political issue. Uh, it was something that was very rare. Uh, so there were disputes about this, to be sure, in the tradition. But nobody, nobody said that a person has the right to uh, abortion. They did differ on what constituted a threat to the, to the mother's life. Now, all of that is uh, largely irrelevant today because, number one, uh, cases where uh, a pregnancy is really threatening to the mother's life are extremely rare, uh, usually easily handled by good prenatal care. Uh, and uh, also, uh, this is uh, not something which uh, one has, has, has a right to do or an obligation to help somebody else uh, exercise what they think is a right, which is at somebody else's expense. It's the expense of the, uh, of, of the, of, of the unborn child. Uh, and the various uh, texts uh, from the Bible and the Jewish tradition that are cited are all incredibly misinterpreted uh, by those who have turned this into uh, a uh, political issue uh, based upon uh, criteria that are actually antithetical to the normative uh, Jewish tradition. Uh, I want to cite one example of this, uh, of this type of misinformation. Uh, many years ago, uh, the American Jewish Committee, which is uh, an important Jewish organization in, uh, in the United States, uh, commissioned uh, several Jewish scholars, myself included, to write uh, papers on the Jewish tradition's uh, approach to various great uh, uh, public issues. Uh, I was assigned capital punishment, uh, and I indicated that there were those in the Jewish community that uh, regarded capital punishment as, as a good. There were those who couldn't say that it was totally outlawed because the Bible mandates it, but uh, indicated uh, that it was to be very, very rarely, if ever, uh, put into practice. Uh, that was indisputable. However, uh, the late uh, Rabbi David Feldman, who wrote a book called Birth Control and Jewish Law, uh, which was very, very liberal uh, on the question of abortion. Uh, but Rabbi Feldman, uh, whom I knew quite well, uh, still was beholden to the Jewish tradition, who never said explicitly that somebody had a right to uh, an abortion. He, he, he didn't go that far because he was still uh, very much somebody who was beholden to the tradition. Uh, when we came together, uh, a certain uh, professor uh, of, I think it was a social work at the time, uh, who for, for all I know might be a member of the National Council for Jewish Women, uh, was terribly upset with Rabbi Feldman's uh, paper, which I thought was uh, too, too, too lenient, but nonetheless, uh, that he didn't explicitly say that this is uh, a right that can be exercised for, for no reason whatsoever. Uh, and at that time, uh, I challenged her as follows. I said, all right, you write a paper that argues that position and tell us why that paper is a Jewish statement other than the fact that it was written by somebody with an obviously Jewish name. The paper was never written. Uh, but I think a version of that paper or that kind of a statement was issued by the Nas National Council for, uh, for Jewish Women. Um, 
uh, to be charitable, I would say that they are mistaken, uh, and mistakes need to be uh, corrected. Uh, we are obligated, WMET, to speak the truth. Uh, and I think that uh, what I'm saying is not uh, just my personal opinion, uh, but is something which is consistent with the Jewish tradition of Torah Minashamayim, of the divinely revealed Torah, uh, as interpreted within the uh, Jewish tradition, and to cite random cases uh, from the past when circumstances were very, very different, uh, to support a uh, kind of a general position that there is a right to abortion uh, is simply false and needs to be uh, exposed as such. Thank you. I'm the news that nobody expected. I was never a part of your plan. I'm the reason why life, as you know, it feels like slipping through your trembling hands. And the doctors say I'm just an option, a mistake you can make disappear. I may not have a voice, but I'm more than a choice. I'm as real as the heartbeat you hear. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. I am God's miracle in the making. Proof that all things can work for the good. I am fingers and toes and heaven already knows. The name you pick out for me already belongs to me. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. Every life is sacred and every life is a gift. And every life deserves a chance to live. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. I know you're scared right now. But when you hear my first cries and when you look in my eyes, you'll understand why, why you brought me to life. So don't close the book on me yet. I've still got a long way to go. Empty pages to fill, and the best part is still down the road. Oh, I am a story untold. May there be abundant peace from heaven and good life upon us and upon all Israel. Amen. <laughs>